morning. Good morning. It's good to see all of you all out this morning. You all sound great. I'm going to put you to the test here in a minute to sing with me. But our scripture this morning is one of my favorites, Psalm 94, 22. But the Lord has become my fortress and my God, the rock in whom I take refuge. I'm going to ask you to stand and sing with me this morning, Rock of Ages. church we doing all right this morning okay three of you guys are doing all right this morning that's a, that's a not a great percentage but it's a percentage <laughs> um, guys I do have some announcements for you this morning I want to welcome you to Witcher um, one of the first things that's on my docket for announcements is that this is the last Sunday that I'm asking for you to do mandatory face coverings that is so exciting for me to say uh, it has been a long <laughs> no amens all across uh, it has been a long time. Uh, I thank you so much for your patience in this. Uh, so next Sunday, our face coverings are not required. Now, please understand that for you, for your specific situation or for your health, it may still be good for you to do that. Uh, I want you to know that please feel free to do that. I'm not going to think any less of you. No one else should think any less of you. If they do, let me know and I'll uh, Christ-like punch them in the face and then tell them I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, he turned over tables. It's a possibility. It's a possibility. But uh, I'm so excited to say that. Now, I will tell you this with just a, an air of caution. I would like to think that that is something we will never have to do again. Uh, I could be lying to you if I were to say that. Uh, we do not know what the months ahead will bring. We do not know what the fall or the winter will bring. Uh, but for now, we are so thankful for the provision of the Lord, uh, for our consistency in this, in order to provide a safe environment for people to worship the Lord. Uh, we have done what we can this past year and a half, and I think that uh, all things considered that that has been well for us. So I thank you for your patience on that, and I look forward to next Sunday to seeing your faces again. Uh, hopefully you've been able to tell. I'm almost always smiling underneath my mask, but you maybe can't tell unless my eyes squint if that's really happening or not. So I'm looking forward to seeing expressions um, again starting next Sunday. Um, also, uh, I want to remind you guys that we do have a night of joy this evening at 6 p.m. Uh, now, my wife and I are still going to be joyful, but we're going to be joyful at camp this evening. So we're going to miss you guys, but we're looking forward uh, to hearing the good stories from that tonight. And it should be outside, hopefully. Weather, uh, weather permitting, it will be outside. If the weather is nasty, it will move inside as we had to do a couple Sundays ago. Um, also, our next thing for our summer uh, event, other than tonight, is going to be a family Sunday uh, coming up on July the 11th. So I want to encourage you guys not to forget about that. A family Sunday for us means that we're going to, uh, everyone needs to bring their own picnic lunch uh, for your families for after service. We're going to share and some games and some different things together. We're not going to have children's church. They'll be in the service that day. They'll have an activity bag and stuff. But 
That's me our next summer at Witcher event. And then after that, our next uh, Night of Joy on July the 25th, we're going to have um, a young guest singer with us by the name of Corey Clark. Uh, so we're looking forward to having uh, him lead our worship for that service. Uh, the next announcement I have for you is that our next quarterly business meeting is scheduled for July the 18th um, at 6 p.m. Just to make you guys aware of that, that'll be coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, also, two more announcements for you. We're going to be collecting cereal for the month of July. So if you get a chance while you're out to uh, pick up some cereal for our Riverside Food Pantry, please feel free to do so. Uh, and then also, one of the young kids among us, uh, Miss Lakin, is going to be having a birthday party next Sunday, uh, July the 4th at 3 p.m. So those who are able to come, uh, please feel free to, to come. It's going to be here at the church uh, in the downstairs. So if you guys are able to attend, you guys are welcome to attend with that. If you have any questions, uh, just feel free to ask. Um, this morning. Uh, we are going to be heading out for camp, those who are able to go. Uh, so we're excited about that. Please remember to keep us in your prayers for this week, uh, for safety, for good weather, uh, for people to understand their need for Christ and to receive their need for Christ. I know that many of the people I got to work with, whether in youth or even as adults, they will tell you either they were saved at church camp or it was a tremendous experience and they're growing in their relationship with Christ. So pray that that happens uh, for those that are going uh, this week, not only from our church, but also from those all across the state. So uh, that's a, a good transition, I hope, for our time of prayer this morning. Uh, in addition to our church camp uh, folks that are going, uh, who else can we list up in our prayers this morning? Continue to remember Miss Pat. Thank you, Jim. Others this morning? Okay. We'll remember your family, Jim. And remember Miss Sharon, please. Others this morning? Remember my office back on Friday. She's doing decent. Okay. Okay. Others this morning? Yes, Miss Wanda. Amen. Amen. Um, yes. I'd ask you to pray for mom. Beth, Beth? Uh, okay. She's fine. She's got some health issues going on. And her mind, she gets, um, get bored. Uh, it, it's rough because I don't have my dad anymore. You, you worry about that one last parent you have. You know, she, she loved, you know, loves all y'all to death. And so highly this church. We will do that. Others this morning? Well, I mentioned this morning that they don't get to come home. Okay. That's a prayer request and a praise. Yeah. Others this morning? Yes, Miss Diane? No, Ian. Say that one more time. No, Okay. Okay. Any others this morning? Any prayer requests? Sean Ingram. Sean Ingram. Okay. Any others this morning? Unspoken requests? Let's lift these concerns to the Lord this morning. God, I thank you for this day, uh, this opportunity for us to gather uh, in your name, to hear from your word, uh, to be encouraged by other brothers and sisters as they walk their different paths of life. And God, it's just so good to see uh, so many faces out here, some we haven't got to see in a while, and um, others that are, are just so faithful and consistent. God, thank you uh, for this group of, of church people. God, I just thank you for that. I thank you for your faithfulness to them. I thank you for how you continue to provide week after week in the seasons of their life. And God, I just pray that you continue to be with them this morning um, before we list any of our other concerns. Continue to provide, continue to move and work in their lives and allow them to see that. Uh, sometimes you're much at work and we're just not really noticing it. And so God, I pray that you'd help them uh, to see that in the days and the weeks ahead. God, I pray that you would be with our requests this morning. I pray you continue to be with Pat 
uh, and her health. Lord, just continue to provide for her needs. God, we pray for the Hudson family. Um, as Jim's mom has had a difficult couple of weeks, God, we just pray that you'd continue to be with her and with them as they make um, hard decisions in the, in the days and the weeks to come. Oh, we pray for Ramona uh, as she also is having health issues and uh, there's questions about what is best for her care in the future. God, I pray that you'd be with her and her family as they're making those decisions. God, continue to be with Miss Leah Blake as she has a lot of, uh, of health concerns and a long road ahead of her uh, with cancer treatment. So we pray that you'd be with her. God, with Beth Wilson, um, you alone know those health issues and concerns. And God, I, just, I pray that you just continue to strengthen her. Um, provide for her and for her son uh, in this season. God, for Dick Johnson, we thank you for, uh, for helping him to be on the men that he gets to be able to be released this week, but continue to be with him that uh, he can have the healing he needs to get back to what you still have for him to do. God, we pray for Lois this morning. We pray for Sean. Um, Lord, just continue to move and to work in them and in the needs that they have. And God, we pray for all the unspoken requests this morning. Uh, we thank Ms. Wanda for her praise that an unspoken was answered. God, you can answer requests that are never spoken. Um, they're just the, the heavy requests of our hearts. And God, I pray that you would just continue to move and to work and to do that. And God, we would give you praise when you do answer those requests. God, in our service, just guide us and direct us. Um, we thank you. We pray these things in the name of Jesus and amen. sister's favorites um, but I think the thing I like about it the most is circumstances in our life may change our families may change our jobs may change everything going on around us could be in chaos but the one thing that never changes is God never changes his promises never are not fulfilled everything he says he will do he will do. I'm going to ask you to sing with me today, Great is Thy Faithfulness. <laughs>
the piano. And I hope you just take that time to meditate and be ready for Jonathan's message this morning. I'll be doing this. It is no secret what God can do. Good morning again, church. If you would, please turn with me in your Bibles to Lamentations chapter 3. Lamentations chapter 3. Um, it's a small book, kind of in the middle of the, the Bible in the Old Testament. Um, so if you have any problems looking at it, there's something in the front of your books, most likely, that has like a concordance. You can look up the name of the book and cheat. It will tell you the page that it's on. Uh, and you can look it up that way. Um, in my book, Lamentations chapter 3, the portion I'm reading from today is on page 1,372, if that is remotely helpful, and I doubt that it will be, but maybe, just maybe, the odd chance. So uh, <laughs> as we come into uh, this morning, uh, I saw today's message, Happy Again. Uh, and I think that for many of us, uh, we are, are still kind of in this process of coming out of a, of a difficult season. Uh, maybe just the announcement that we don't have to wear a mask next week is enough for you guys to be uh, happy. Perhaps that's enough. I'm also looking forward that um, next Sunday, uh, I won't be staying up here while the prayer is being said. I will, I will not be paying attention to the closing prayer. I'll be walking down the aisle so I can greet people uh, as they will exit next Sunday service. I have missed that so much. Um, now, if you still want to like fist bump instead of like full on hug, I understand that's fine. Uh, we can we can figure that out as we go. But I'm looking forward to that. Uh, it's been a, a crazy season, 
And I think that many of us are uh, feeling those signs or have been seeing those signs and been feeling that for a little bit that, that we're coming out. It seems like our, our, uh, our happiness is a bit up, you know, our, our emotions are a bit up, and that's, that's good. We're excited about that. Uh, and I hope that you're excited about that. It feels like we come out of a season that we have those in life where things are just not great. Uh, things are just kind of hard and challenging. It seems like nothing's really going the way that we'd like it to go. It just seems like even in our best efforts, we're just kind of hitting a wall and we just can't seem to get over that. Uh, and so we're going to talk today about a prophet of the Lord that found himself in that same situation. Now, uh, I'm going to do what a pastor should probably never do. Uh, we're planning to leave for camp. We have to leave early. So I have planned to, for this service to be short. Now, every time a minister says he plans to be short, he almost always makes himself to be a liar. So I intend to not do that, uh, but we'll see <laughs> how well I do with that this morning. When we come to this uh, passage of scripture specifically, it is so helpful to me when we come to the scriptures that we don't find this sugar-coated, everything is seen through rose-colored glasses kind of an experience. Uh, we come to the scriptures and we see people as who they are. We see circumstances as who they are, as what they are. We, we see difficulties. We see struggles. It's not that everything is always put together and going well all the time because it's not. Uh, if we can hear the words of a prophet of the Lord that things weren't always going well, and he had his own uh, questions and doubts and struggles, uh, that's something that we can take to heart. That's something that can help us when we find ourselves in such a season. And even if we find ourselves as perhaps a nation or at least as a community with some of the burdens of the past year and a half being lifted to some extent, that doesn't mean that we're immune to other things that are going on in our lives, things that perhaps are not easing when it comes to the ease of restrictions, when it comes to COVID. And so I hope that this will be an encouragement to you this morning. Uh, it's almost doing it a disservice to have this be a shorter service because I could do a whole series on this chapter and I might at some time in the future. But for today, uh, let's look at Lamentations. I'm going to read chapter 3, verses 16 through 27 for us to look at this morning. Uh, Lamentations chapter 3, starting in verse 16. It says, He has made my teeth grind on gravel, and he has made me cower in ashes. My soul is bereft of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. So I say my endurance has perished, and so has my hope from the Lord. Remember my affliction and my wonderings, the wormwood and the gall. My soul continually remembers it, and it's bowed down within me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. There's many other uh, tremendous verses in this chapter, but for the sake of our time today, uh, we have read just those. Uh, as I start off, in order for us to have a sermon that says happy again, it assumes that we've had a season of not being happy. It assumes a season of darkness, a season of difficulty, a season of struggle. As we come into this, uh, this is a prophet of the Lord. This is a person that the Lord called upon their life specifically to speak the word of God to the nation uh, of Israel and Judah during a difficult season and perhaps the most difficult season in their life. At this point in their history, uh, rejection by God was coming because of their disobedience and their sin. The, the nation was going to be uh, completely destroyed and carried off to live and to be uh, treated however uh, a foreign nation decided for them to be treated. The temple, the great place that Solomon had once stood and dedicated and prayed a miraculous prayer, uh, a prayer that God would always hear the request of his people, that beautiful, beautiful temple, uh, renowned by people all over the world, was destroyed and burned and tore apart. This is a time where it seemed like all of the happiness, all of the promises of God were destroyed. And the question was, can God ever uh, recover us from this? Can we ever make it back from this point? 
But what we see him saying with his own words in verse 17, in the ESV translation, it says, I have forgotten what happiness is. If you have the King James Version in front of you, uh, it would say that I have forgotten prosperity. This word behind, uh, the Hebrew word behind this, whether it's the prosperity in the King James, whether it's happiness in the ESV, it's this Hebrew word tov, which kind of means a general sense of good. Uh, of what is good or what should be considered good. Uh, the same word is used earlier in the scriptures in the first book of the Bible. In Genesis, as God is creating the world, whenever we hear the word good used in those chapters, it is this same word. When God saw that it was light and that it was good, it was tov. It was the Hebrew word for good. In Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, whenever uh, we saw that Joseph had experienced so much turmoil in his life, when he was sold into slavery and had all of that mess, thrown in prison. I mean, I hope that you're familiar with that story. When he was eventually elevated to second in command and God used him to spare his family, he said this. He says, you thought and planned evil against me, but God meant it for good, for tov, that Hebrew word. When we come to this, we have a prophet of God, a person who is speaking on behalf of God, a person who arguably knows God better than almost anyone else at this time in history. And he is saying from his own mouth that he has forgotten what goodness is. Perhaps you've ever heard someone say this, or perhaps you've thought it in your mind. I just don't remember the last time I felt good. I just don't remember the last time things seemed to be working out well. This is a prophet of God by his own confession, just laying out his soul before the Lord. I've forgotten what happiness is. I've forgotten what goodness is. I've forgotten what it means for there to be prosperity. Now, the verses that we have not seen earlier in this chapter, I want to just pull out a few things for them for you to understand how much in despair the prophet is at this moment. And this is not just the despair of this prophet. This is how the entire nation of Israel feels. In verse 1, it says, I'm a man who has seen affliction. Uh, perhaps you, you see a person, they're telling you their story of why they're, uh, they're frustrated or they're upset at the moment. And you're just kind of sitting there and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know that you've either experienced something more difficult or more challenging, or you're currently going through that, or someone else is currently going through that. And this person's upset uh, because, you know, someone left a, a cart in their parking lot and they weren't able to get to the closest space uh, at Walmart. This person says, I have seen affliction. And he's seen affliction. He has seen the temple of God uh, destroyed. He has seen these things happen with his own eyes. Verse 2, it says, He has driven and brought me into darkness without light. This he that he's referring to is God. This is a prophet of God saying, God has driven me to a place of darkness. And I don't feel like there's any light at the end of the tunnel. In verse 12, he has bent his bow and set me as his target, for, uh, as the target for his arrow. Have you ever felt like everything is just kind of working against you? You ever feel like everything is just kind of falling into place, not in your favor? As if God is specifically targeting you, that idea of God is this magnifying glass and you're this little ant that he's just kind of shining a little sunlight through uh, in order to make things just a mess for you. Now, this is a prophet of God saying this. This is recorded in the scriptures, okay, as words for us to hear. In verse 16, where we had started today, he has made my teeth grind on gravel. Now, in order for us to understand how bleak uh, this prophet believes things are at this moment, whenever they would make bread in the Middle East, the way in which they would make it is sometimes it would have ashes that would get into it. Sometimes, in fact, even little bits of gravel or little bits of pebbles would get into the bread. He says, even whenever I'm provided food to eat, I go to take a bite of bread and I get a gravel stuck in my tooth. This is how bad things are for the prophet. Nothing is going good. Even the things that should bring enjoyment to me, even the things that should encourage me, it just seems like everything is working against me. I've just forgotten what happiness is. I have forgotten what goodness is like. I have forgotten what prosperity can be. I mean, whenever we see this, this is an honest word from a prophet. Again, this is recorded for us to hear. This is a prophet of God wondering what God is up to. This should encourage us that words that are this real and this raw are recorded for us to hear. In verse 18, there's a temptation of this prophet to despair and to reject the Lord as the person who provides for him. 
In verse 18, we see this, remember my affliction and my wonders. Aren't you paying attention, God? Don't you see what's happening? Uh, the terms wormwood and gall are just to add to the sadness and the destruction. Words that talk about uh, things going bad for a person. My soul continually remembers it. It is bowed down within me. Uh, he had said, my endurance has perished and so has my hope from the Lord. God, I'm just exhausted. God, I get up every day and I'm trying to make it through whatever this is going through. And I'm just tired of doing that anymore. My hope in you is exhausted. Guys, these are, these are tough words. The, the, this is a prophet that if he were to come in and service and speak, we'd probably be like, stop discouraging the kids, you know, stop, stop. What are you talking about? This is what this prophet is going through. He is forgotten. He feels like happiness and goodness. Those times are just gone and he doesn't know as if they can be restored. But he does not stop there. That is not the end of this chapter. That is not the end of his story. In verse 21, he says, But as bad as things are, as messed up as things are right now, as frustrated as, as much as I'm struggling, as much as I can't see in the darkness of this season, I remember this, verse 21, I call this to mind, and therefore I have hope. Now, he sounded hopeless in every verse up to this point. This is a turning point in this chapter. I call this to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I imagine that the hymn that we sang this morning was inspired by this set of verses. If it wasn't, then they missed out on that inspiration. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope. And he recalls to mind how faithful God has been. Maybe the majority of this prophet's experience has been turmoil and difficulty and darkness, but he even recalls God's faithfulness to people that came before him. He says, I bring this to mind. I remember it because my hope and my happiness should not be based on what I'm currently going through, but it should be based on who God is. If God has allowed this situation into my life, and he had. If God has allowed the destruction of his own temple, what is God up to? If God has allowed the removal of his own people from the promised land, God, what are you up to? God, why would you allow this to happen? If God has allowed it, he must be up to something. He says, yes, this is a dark moment, but I remember that the, the most important thing about God is that he has still been steadfast in his love to humanity up to this point. Perhaps he recalls how Adam and Eve sinned and immediately they have coverings that the Lord made for them. Perhaps he remembers Abraham in the times that he would have shortcomings and God was continually persistent and faithful to him. Perhaps he remembers Moses, a person that had murdered someone else and then God uses him to be the one to rescue his people. Perhaps he's remembered that all of the story of humanity before God has been a story of God continuing to love people that never really loves him back well. When he comes, as he remembers this, he says, who am I in this moment to forget the main character trait of the Lord? His love is steadfast. If you have the King James Version in front of you, it says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. It's this idea that what humanity has deserved is what Israel has just experienced. It says, this is what humanity deserves. We deserve the darkness of the Lord. We, we deserve to be pushed out from his grace, from his goodness. We deserve to not have prosperity. This is what man deserves. All man, every country, every nation. This is what we should get. But the majority of the time, this is not what we experience. The majority of the time, the Lord has been so good to us. The Lord has taken care of us. The Lord has provided for us. If we are alive today and not already sentenced to the eternity that we deserve in hell, God has already been gracious, is how the prophet understands his experience. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. This is how he remembers this. He says, they're new every morning. He doesn't point to something specific. He just says, every single morning that I wake up is another opportunity to know that God has been faithful to me. Great is your 
faithfulness. The Lord is my portion. It's like uh, whenever you have to kind of pull yourself up and give yourself a bit of a, a pep talk, the, Jeremiah says, listen, the Lord is my portion. All of the things I've said, all the questions, all the doubt I've had, at, at the end of my thought, I cannot cast off the Lord. I cannot. He is the only hope that I have for the future, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. Now, remember, all the verses we've looked at so far, I mean, it's hopeless. I mean, this situation is not good. Uh, the things that we may face and experience are not what Jeremiah was going through at this moment. I mean, it must have seemed like all hope was lost. And yet he recalls the faithfulness of God. This is what gives him enough to carry him through. It's the everyday faithfulness of God. And now, whenever I was thinking of that, sometimes there is the burden of the everyday that just becomes daunting over time. Uh, now, I am currently a father of three kids. Um, I also wear clothes and my wife wears clothes. And so that's a lot of clothes in addition to three kids that have to be washed on a daily basis. Uh, we have dishes that have to be washed every day. Uh, some of you guys know a couple weeks ago, our dishwasher had went out at the parsonage. So it was about 10 days with all of the backup with different things, about 10 days to two weeks before we had a dishwasher. And I'd never had a dishwasher before. I grew up as not, without having a dishwasher. I was part of the dishwashing services uh, at my home growing up. But sometimes just those everyday things that have to be done, whether it's food every day, dishes every day, laundry every day, just those everyday tasks become daunting day after day. Like, okay, at the end of this day, I have this many cups, this many spoons, this many forks that had to be washed all over again. I had this many clothes, this many things had to be folded all over again. Whenever you do a load of kids' clothes, it seems like it takes forever because there's like 70 pieces of little clothes that have to be folded and taken care of. And those are things that have to happen every day just for us to make it through the next 24 hours, to make it for the next 24 hours. And I love how the prophet Jeremiah says his mercies are new every morning. You see, the thing that has carried him through is that God, every single day, is faithful to him in an everyday faithfulness, just like the things that we have to have done every single day. God doesn't miss a day of providing faithfulness. For us. Every time you have to wash a dish, every time you have to fold a piece of, of, of clothing, every time you have to do something you have to do every single day, remember that God never ceases every day to provide faithfulness for you, to be available to you, to be your reason for hope for the end of that day and for the day yet to come. He transitions here from talking about the Lord's faithfulness. That's what pulls him out of this despair and this mess to finding happiness, we'll say, or having, finding goodness. Again, verses 25 through 27, it's intentional that the prophet uses the word good three times in these verses. After he remembers how good God is, after he remembers his faithfulness, he uses this word good, the same word that was used for happiness, the same word that we saw in Genesis on those two occasions I gave you. He used it three times in verses 25 through 27. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. The soul who seeks for him, it is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke uh, in his youth. He has realized that happiness is not uh, whatever current state I'm feeling at the moment, but happiness is seeking what the Lord is up to in the moment that we now face. And sometimes it's hard for us to know that. Sometimes we won't know that until we make it through several more days or months or years and get to look back on it. But happiness is still seeking the Lord and waiting for his salvation. He says, what I know about God is enough to know that this is not the end of the story. This darkness, this difficulty, this frustration is not the end. It is not the final stay. It is not how the story ends. Eventually, there is this happy ever after, and it's completely dependent on the Lord. And I'm going to trust that if he's faithful to me every day, he has the end figured out. My current frustration, my current depression, my current whatever, this is not the end of my story. I will find goodness again. Happiness will return. So what do we do while we wait? Because it's easy to say, it's easy to say that God's got something coming because we're making a prediction about something that we really can't tell is going to happen or not. For those who are not Christians, they're like, well, it's really easy for Christians to say everything's just going to work out okay because they're making a statement that they cannot prove one way or another, and they would be accurate in that. 
Now, we would say that the reason why we believe that is because we have faith and trust in how God has already acted all across history. If he's been faithful all across history, he's going to be faithful with the future. And that is something that we can put our hope and trust in. But what is something good for us to do while we wait, while we're still in this moment that may be dark for, for weeks and for months or for years to come? I mean, Jeremiah and the people of God were separated from their homeland for 70 years. This wasn't a darkness of a couple of weeks and everything was fine. This is a difficult season in the history of God's people. What do we do while we wait? I want to give you three things, and then I'm going to end because I told you I was going to be short. Um, listen. Verses 23, or 28 through 32, it says, Let him sit alone uh, in silence. It goes on to say other things here, but there's this point of, of sitting and waiting to understand what God has done. When we pause, when we put a pause on our busyness, on our activities, to listen. Sometimes God is speaking and we're just not taking the time to listen. Sometimes there's things that we could spare ourselves of that we're adding to the darkness or the confusion of our lives in the moment because we're just not listening. We need to pause and to listen, examine. Uh, the first part of verse 40 says, it says, let us test and examine our ways. The reason why Israel is at this point in their history is because they have rejected God for years for decades, for centuries, and God could not ignore their disobedience. He had predicted that this day would come, and they refused to listen. It says, let us test and examine our ways. Sometimes the darkness of our lives are things that we have contributed to. It's not just things that somebody has done to us outside of us. It's not necessarily that some virus has happened that now invades our lives, has finally come to us, and we have to change all this stuff in order to accommodate it. Sometimes the difficult seasons of our lives are things that we have brought upon ourselves by not listening to something else God has already told us. And so Jeremiah says we must test and examine our ways. Let us pause. Let us see. It's part of this frustration because I'm just not listening. It's part of this frustration because I'm doing things that are apart from the path that God has for me. There needs to be an honest examination. The second half of verse 40 would encourage us to repent and return to the Lord. Verse 40, the full verse says, let us test and examine our ways and return to the Lord. This is this idea of repentance. Repentance is not a 360. Because if you were to do 360, you start here and you turn right back away and go all the way you're going before. Repentance is to acknowledge after examination that there are things that need worked on. There are things that need changed. And we turn from that. And who we turn to is the Lord. Jeremiah says, it is the Lord has allowed this trouble in my life, but it is also the Lord who's going to be the only person who can get me out of this. Mess. I must not abandon. I must trust. I must lean in more. I must look more. I must listen more. I must return to the Lord. Now, this is a believer that is speaking to the people that are supposed to be God's people. If we hear this idea of repentance and we are not among God's people, what this would mean for us is that we need to turn from trying to figure out life on our own and saying, God, I do not have this. God, I, I understand that what Christians say or what the Bible says is that you do have a plan for my life and that all of my mistakes and my shortcomings have been forgiven and a person that paid those prices for me. God, I am tired of figuring things out on my own. Lord, my life is yours. I return to you. This is the idea of repentance. This is what Jeremiah would want for those who are not of the Lord to hear and to understand. When we come to this chapter, it's a difficult chapter. It's a hard chapter. What he was looking for, he was looking for a hope for a future for the nation of Israel. For us, things are a little bit different because we know that the salvation of the Lord has not only come for Israel people, not only would they eventually be released, not only would they eventually return to their homeland, not only would they eventually return the temple. Can you imagine the day that they dedicated the second temple? What a hopeful day that must have been. And yet that was not the full plan of the salvation of the Lord. It wasn't for them to build another building. The salvation of the Lord was going to come in the person of Jesus. Jeremiah did not know the full extent of God's plan at that moment, but God was sending a salvation for the darkness of the world, not just for the people of Israel, but for everyone who would see and notice and believe. So for us, we live on this side of history where the true salvation of the Lord has been provided. 
And so whatever darkness that we find in our life, whatever seasons will come, who knows what will happen to this nation in a hundred years from now, if it's even allowed to stand that long. Who knows what will be written and what will be experienced in this country in decades yet to come. But all of those are circumstances that can change with the flow of time. Something that will not change is what the Creator has made, and that is our lives and how our lives interact with His greater plans. The salvation of Jesus is an eternal thing, it is a promise of life that is well beyond this temporary, but extends into everything that comes after our physical death. Jeremiah prophesied of a difficult season. He did not yet know of the salvation that was provided in Jesus. For us, we have that full understanding of history. We know that God has come for us. We know that our sins can be forgiven in the cross. And so for us, our waiting is not necessarily a waiting for salvation. Salvation has come in the person of Jesus. Our waiting is for the uh, complete elimination of evil that comes with the second return of Jesus. Imagine a world in which nothing described by this prophet can ever happen to us. There will be a happiness in which we are face to face with the Lord. There will be no shame and no guilt because it's already been removed for those who believe in him. And nothing can ever interrupt that happiness, that goodness again. This is what the scriptures promise to those who believe in the Lord. And so I just want to encourage you uh, with these closing words that I think the prophet would have for us. Recognize the Lord's goodness and find your happiness again. Our happiness is not based again on our circumstance because he is still in a mess when he says, I find this thought, I remember, I recall, and I put my hope in the Lord. Recognize the Lord's goodness. The Lord has sent his son for you. He is preparing a place for you if you receive that. In the midst of this mess, remember that. Recall that. Recognize that. Every day as you have breath of life in you again, every day as God's provision is provided for you, recognize the Lord's goodness. And may that be what brings you to a season of happiness again. If you do not experience that this side of heaven, be expectant that it is coming when you see him face to face. It has been promised, and as Carrie Beth said earlier, not one promise of the Lord has ever not come true. Guys, let's close our service this morning in prayer. God, as we come before you, we thank you for the words of this prophet. Perhaps we can relate. Father, it's, it's discouraging sometimes the seasons that our lives um, come to. Sometimes these are things that we have brought up on ourselves. And Father, sometimes they're not. It's just what's happening at the moment. It's things outside of our control. And it's things that you have allowed. And that causes us to doubt and to question and to wonder. And God, we're so small and your knowledge of everything is so big. God, forgive us whenever we're frustrated like the prophet. But God, we thank you for his words because you expect us to be so bold and so honest with you. You can handle it. And so God, I pray that you would help those that are here this morning. If they're struggling, if this is a hard season, if things are just still dark and this is just that moment, they can relate and they can feel what that prophet felt. God, I pray that they would come to the same conclusions as the prophet did. Father, they would see that you have not abandoned them, but faithfulness um, has been provided for you day by day. Father, not only in that, but the great faithfulness of you is that you sent your own son to die for their sins. Father, that they might have forgiveness, that they might be able to one day live with you in a place where all evil is extinguished. God, I pray that you would help them to recognize your goodness even in the midst of this season. And Father, they might find their happiness in you. God, I pray that you would just be pleased with the closing of this service. Be with us as we're getting ready to head out for camp, that that just might be a wonderful blessing to all of those in attendance. God, encourage your folks here tonight through the night of joy and just carry them from this week to the next. We thank you and ask these things in the name of Jesus. And amen. Would you stand and join with me in our invitation hymn, please? <laughs>
ask Brother Rodney if he'll close our service in prayer today. Amen. Amen.